Do you love indies? Then you may want to stick around for the next hour as we attempt to rank the top 10 indies of all time. My name is Brennan Groom, and I'm the host of the Pass Controller Podcast. And joining me on this indie-filled journey is an illustrious cast from around the country. Let's meet the panel. Joining us from Indie Obscura, the editor-in-chief, Morgan Shaver. Morgan, how are you doing tonight? Uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Keeping this train going, we have Cameron Hawkins, writer at Dual Shockers, and the current Kind of Funny Intersight champion. Cameron, how are you doing tonight? Great. I'm ready to talk games. Ready to talk indies? I'm, yeah. I'm very curious to see what you go to bat for tonight. It's going to be it's going to be a good time. We'll see. Also joining us is Jenny Windham, developer at Rose City Games, the queen of cozy games, and recently <laughs> featured in a Nintendo Indie Direct. That's pretty <laughs> pretty remarkable. Jenny, how are you doing tonight? Uh, very, very good. I'm excited to talk indie games. Yeah, indies need more love, and that's what we're here to do today. Mm-hmm. Keeping this going, we have Alex Van Aking, editor, video producer, podcaster, pretty much does everything you can think at OK Beast. Alex, how are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks so much for, for having me on the panel. I'm excited. Yeah, this is a great group. I'm very excited. And rounding us out is one of my co-hosts, the former Overwatch fiend, Todd Gary. Todd, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm doing well. I'm excited to to dive in. Yeah, I mean, you're wearing a Cuphead shirt, so I feel like I already have some, <laughs> I, I, someone on my side fighting for, for a game I'm interested in. So yeah, right. I'm, I'm very excited. So a little bit of the nitty gritty of how we're going to run things tonight. We each picked three games ahead of time. We're just going to get to us in a, a list of 18 games. And between that 18, we're going to all come together and figure out how we can narrow this impossible task of making a top 10 list of the best indie games of all time. So to kick things off, we're going to start with Alex. Alex, if you want to take a moment to fight for your first three indie games. Sure. Um, well, my first pick um, is going to be Celeste. Uh, by Matt Makes Games. Uh, it's a for those who aren't aware, it's a 2D platformer um, that is really fun. It came out in I think 2018. Uh, features a character named Madeline, um, and you are kind of uh, platforming through this like dream-like, dream-esque mountaintop that's full of you know different environments and different buildings, and you're kind of platforming, making your way to the top of the summit. And along the way, um, the the game surprisingly, when I first played it. I didn't, I wasn't really expecting this, but it kind of dives pretty deep into some, you know, mental health discussions. And, and uh, I just found that when I played this game, I was going through, you know, some hardships and it just came at the right time uh, and kind of spoke to me and, and was a touching story and honestly, just a, a really fun gameplay experience. Um, And so Celeste, uh, it's also got an incredible soundtrack um, by Lena Rain. It's phenomenal. Um, There's also a great remix soundtrack. So all in all, just a really fun game, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to include it on this list. Uh, my second pick is one that I'm sure many people are familiar with, Undertale, uh, developed by Toby Fox and Friends. Uh, it's, a RP- it's the RPG that, that got famous for you know, uh, allowing you to not kill enemies and to progress through the entire game uh, via a pacifist run, and it's full of really fun characters and i i'm actually like not one of those people that like sometimes like video game stories kind of just bounce off of me unfortunately i i think it's you know just like a um you know when you're just reading text on screen sometimes it doesn't always land but for me undertale was one of those games that just you know it was so relatable it was so funny um the characters you really the characters were are honestly all over the place and are, are written in a very um I don't know, or like a meme format. Like there's a lot of like internet culture in this game. And so I'm mm. curious how that'll age like 10 years down the line. But um, having played it, I played it in 2017, I think, uh, a few years after it released and it quickly became one of my favorite games. Also banger soundtrack as well. Uh, and then lastly, my third pick um, is a walking simulator. It was actually, uh, it's my favorite walking sim. It's Firewatch developed by Campo Santo. Um, I just, I love the story between uh, the main characters, Henry and Delilah. Uh, Henry kind of goes out into the wilderness and becomes a, you know, joins the Firewatch and, and is on the lookout for fires and develops a relationship with this other character named Delilah along the way. And um, yeah, it's just a very cinematic uh, story that was presented gorgeously with um, beautiful artwork. And, and yeah, so Firewatch is easily one of my favorite games 
uh, and one of my favorite indies of all time. So uh, that's why I included it on this list. And those are my three picks. It's definitely a trend of banger music in your picks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know. Firewatch too, man. Banger music. Acoustic guitars. Oof. So good. <laughs> you, you, got, you got to have it. So, Cam, what are your three picks to add to this list of 18? So my first pick is uh, Limbo. Limbo is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, the ending made me cry, and it literally has no dialogue throughout the entire game, and it's a very gloomy game as you as you can tell by the title um and i think that achieving that for me was just a huge uh speaks volumes and um i think that it is masterful in the sound design like there are little secrets in the game where you have to rely on the sound design to pass certain levels or certain sections of the game uh because it's literally just completely dark so you can't see your character uh, which I think is really, really cool level design and sound design. Um, I think just artistically, it is beautiful with it being all in whites, blacks, and uh, grays. Um, I think it's just, I, I, like, I just can't think of any flaws with this game. I think I think, I think it's uh, as perfect to a video game as it can be. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's great. Uh, my second game is Castle Crashers. Uh, I yes. Think, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on the 360, that was like... I put so many hours into Castle Crashers. I, I replayed that game countless times. It's so replayable. It's it's endlessly fun. There's so much content in that game. Um, it's it, it's just a great it, one. In my opinion, probably the best like multiplayer indie there is. Um, bringing back that arcade feel that you like, you know, from like the TMNT, like th that those type of experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think really any any other game like it has surpassed that since its release um and then the third game um i don't it, it's honestly like not one of my favorite games but i think it should be in the discussion which is why i brought it to the table um and that's the binding of isaac um i think that you know uh since indies have become more popular again we've seen a lot of uh roguelike uh roguelike titles like dead cells which is personally my favorite uh, but I think that the Binding of Isaac is just the best. I think that it's just it's just brutally hard, but it's never like I never feel like it's it's my like I I always know it's something that I got to learn and get better at and like it doesn't it it it, it doesn't hold your hand at all. And I mm -hmm. think that as someone who likes to be challenged in video games, I think that that is the most um, attractive thing with roguelikes is when they're just incredibly hard and you just got to figure it out and just adapt and learn and and it's just such a unique game and uh again just tons of content uh i think it's great um so those are my three all, all great picks castle crashers is, is definitely one of my favorite games of all time for yeah. sure uh jenny it's your turn what are your three? Oh my goodness i just have to say it was like i would think i was telling you it was like picking kids i it's the <laughs> hardest decision i think i've had to make in a long time is picking my top three um so my first one was Florence, and this is a really like hopeful and heartfelt game by developer Mountains and Anna Perna Interactive published it. Um, and the premise of this game is about a woman named Florencio who just feels stuck in this mundane loop of everyday life, going to work, coming home, going on social media and like sleeping, rinse and repeat. <laughs> um, but one day she meets this cello player named Krish and sparks ensue. And this game is just this beautiful love story. But throughout it, it's not a love story, perhaps in the most the way that you think by the end. And I, I really appreciated that. Um, this game packs so many emotions into a very short time span. I think it was only about 30 minutes to play. Um, and so I found that the shorter time frame actually felt really great because time-wise it was accessible to consume. Um, it's a game that you can pick up and just really immerse yourself in and feel feel good about. Um, and I picked this because like the story is so human and poignant and the art uses color in an incredibly just intelligent way. The soundtrack uh, is just beautiful. Um, and I think it's also really neat that this is an indie that was on mobile first and the way that the mechanics work and the way that they use touch screen to convey the repetitive, repetitive nature of some of these daily actions, it just 
it's something that only games can do and only games mm -hmm. can immerse you with. And I thought that was really, really beautiful. Um, I also thought it was cool because the team actually intentionally created something that did not involve violence within a game. And I always appreciate when games try to look at different ways that we can engage in a loop and play um, that's not traditional. So that's why I picked Florence. Uh, my second game was one that I didn't initially think of, but the more that I thought about it, the more I was like, ah, I think this, this should be at least mentioned on the list. And that's the Stanley Parable. Uh, mm. Oh gosh, where to start with this? So it's <laughs> developed and published by Galactic Cafe and it's another short game. So I guess I'm also just digging indie games that I can actually finish. Um, and so this is another one where it's about a person named Stanley who's stuck in these sort of daily He's an office worker. He's probably not happy at his job, which is very relatable. And things take a strange turn at the start of the game because all of the coworkers in the office building that Stanley works has disappeared. And so you begin exploring. And as you, as Stanley, explore this office, the narrator starts to really cheekily and snarkily explain and narrate what's happening. And then starts to narrate your decisions and sort of tell you what to do. And as a player, you can choose whether or not to follow those traditional steps that the narrator is telling you or break the mold. And this game is genuinely one of the funniest games I've ever played. Like, I was laughing out loud. Um, and I personally find that humor can be kind of difficult for a lot of games. Um, very few games, I think, really get funny in the way that the Stanley Parable does. And what I loved is there's just some really thoughtful themes presented about the nature of playing games and what it means to consume and engage with a narrative uh, and whether or not we choose to break the rules. Like, what does that mean when the game designer has allowed you to break the rules? It's just it gets really meta and really cool. <laughs> um, and I think only you only really get to see that in indies like indies have the freedom to explore that kind of a discussion. And then my last selection, uh, which this is personally my favorite game of all time, and that's Journey, um, co-developed by that game company and Santa Monica Studio. And I think it's published now on PC and PS4, thanks to Annapurna. Um, and it's a really straightforward game. In Journey, you just play a robed figure who is compelled to move forward toward this mountain and this beam of light. And... Uh, there's no text, there's just music, and you just kind of intrinsically know that that's your goal. And the way that the game takes you through these ruins and through all of these sort of environments without text, but just through music and, and imagery is it's impeccable. It's like probably the greatest work, one of the greatest works of art um, in games for sure, and maybe even outside of games. Um, in its simplicity and clarity, it just I love how when you play Journey, because it is so almost simple or bare as a game, every time you play, you can kind of go into it and engage with it in a different way. Um, the soundtrack was like Grammy nominated, so another just great soundtrack. Um, and for those of you who haven't played, I don't want to go into it too much, but it uh, changed the way I thought about online and co-op play. Uh, throughout the game, there are other robed figures that you can interact with. And by the end, like I have never played it and not cried. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those are my three. Awesome. Definitely, definitely like so far already, this list is so diverse. And I think yeah. just in general, anyone that made their own top 10 is probably going to be nothing like the rest of our lists. <laughs> um, but I'm excited because like everyone's speaking so passionately about these games and, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited right now. I love talking about indie games. So Morgan, that brings us to you. What are your three picks? Uh, so my first pick was uh, Don't Starve. Um, it's mm. a indie survival game, um, and it kind of changes the way survival games work in a few different ways. Um, the art style, I think, is probably one of the most memorable aspects of it. It's got this, like, Tim Burton-esque kind of gothic art style, um, the way the characters interact like this with musical instruments. And I thought that that was really cool when they speak. It's like the sounds of musical instruments. Um, and yeah, it's just a really addicting game to play. It's different every single time, um, but it's easy to jump in because you just start and you just start collecting things. Um, and it just, it doesn't feel 
as difficult in some ways as some of the other survival games at first. And then it's like, as you play, you're like, oh, everything can kill you. <laughs> Um, which I think is also really fun and funny because there's a lot of unexpected elements to it. And as you play and go along, um, it just gets harder and harder and harder. I haven't made it past winter. <laughs> I haven't I haven't gotten that far. So it's very difficult. And I put quite a bit of time into it. So I don't know if I just suck at the game or if it's really hard. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then they also added the multiplayer element, which I think is fun as well, because you can play with your friends and you can choose either to like help each other or burn everything to the ground. <laughs> I have some friends who are just like, yeah, let's just let's torch it. So <laughs> I think that's kind of fun. Um, <clears throat> and then I guess my next pick is kind of a personal one for me, but I think that it's really good and worth mentioning. It's Chivalry Medieval Warfare. Mm -hmm. um, I have put an obscene amount of time into that game. And it was it started as a mod, which I think is really cool because a lot of indie games kind of start that way in some aspects. They like start as a mod, and it has a really great modding community to it as well, where people can do anything. There's like a mod that has like no gravity, and you're just flying through the air screaming, and it's just <laughs> really out there. Um, the multiplayer element to it is kind of interesting as well because the game doesn't encourage you to be chivalrous to other players, but I've noticed that that's something that just naturally happens where sometimes you'll be going around in like a team deathmatch or just a free for all. And you'll just make a friend that you just won't kill for whatever reason. Like you can't really communicate with them other than the voice prompts. Like you can scream at them or say no over and over and over again. And the voice acting at the game is really funny. So it's just, <laughs> it's hard to play it sometimes and not laugh because you'll just see somebody and you'll just run away screaming and it just becomes like a thing. Um, another great element to it as well is the intricacy of the sword play a little bit. Um, when I would play, I it was really difficult and everyone has their different favorite weapon and it's just really hard to master. And I love the fact that there's like clans and people you can make friends with. And there were like servers where they'll teach you, you know, it's not like a, a thing that's built into the game game. The players just made that. Um, and I just think that's really great. I, I haven't seen that kind of element to multiplayer games too much where it's just the players have expanded it on their own. So I think that that's kind of cool. And then my last pick is life is strange uh that one i really liked the narrative of i think it took um kind of an understandable concept of like high school and friendship and it kind of uh elevated it and made it very interesting and different with the time travel mechanic and the rewind and the mm -hmm. the characters were just so well written i found myself really relating to chloe i could see a lot of myself when i was in high school in chloe and i thought that that was kind of it was nice and refreshing to see that kind of dynamic um, between also between Max and Chloe and their friendship. And it's not perfect. There's a lot of things in that game that aren't perfect in the way that they overcome those things and how heavy some of it hits. Like there's so many heavy elements to the game that I think that it does it really well. And it's another one that's hard to play without crying for many of the different episodes in the plot. It's just, mm -hmm. I don't want to spoil anything, but it's, it's sad. It's sad, but it's good, but it's sad. So uh, I really like that game a lot. I love it. So it sounds like between all the picks so far, good music and you have to cry. And that's like right. the benchmark. <laughs> yeah, right. that's, that's where we're at. <laughs> so Todd, let's hear your three picks. All right. Well, my first pick is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, it's another play dead game. It's uh, inside. Uh, the first time I, pick this game up i just remember you just dropped into this world some the same way you are with limbo uh and, you know and you don't know what's going on you're just a boy in a red shirt the 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 tension the lighting the shading everything in this game is like so amazing and you are just it's the same kind of not the piggyback off a of cam but it's the same thing where there's no dialogue in this this game and you are you're just rooting for this boy. You want him to get to where he's going. And there's not like a single word spoken. And the whole time I'm just like, Oh, come on, we're going to do this. We're doing this together, you know? And, uh, and then you get to that without, obviously I'm not going to go to spoilers, but you get to those last 10 minutes and it is one of the most bad shit, crazy ends to a game <laughs> I've ever played. Um, mm. and I loved every, I remember watching it and just being like, what? Oh my God. Oh my God. And then replaying it and replaying it. There is certain things where it's obviously I, I don't want to go into spoilers, but, 
you don't even notice stuff your first playthrough, and then you go through it on your second playthrough, and you're like, wait, oh, what? Uh, oh, and one of one of the reasons why I love this game so much, I love games that the second I'm done with it, I go to the ends of the internet to find people talking about it, and everyone has a different theory. Everyone has, but they all work. They all seem to work in some weird way. There's no set story. Everyone has, you know, it's 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 great and i just love stuff that makes me think for days and days after playing it and that that game was absolutely just a game that i couldn't stop thinking about and that's it's probably why it's one of my favorite games of all time uh number two uh is probably the second indie i think i ever played uh and it was one of those games i saw released on pc and i'm like man i need this game i need this game right now and then it finally got announced for vita uh, it's hotline miami from denaton it was um it's another game that just like hit me over the head with like this crazy violence. But the movie drive came out about a year before this game, I believe. Mm. And I, it's like, and that's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I love the soundtrack. Love, 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 love the soundtrack. So when I started playing hotline Miami, all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm down with this. And like, you got the headphones on and you're just like bopping, running around, killing people. It's so bad, but like, you're just like, you know, you're like, it, there's so many different ways to kill people. There's, you know, there's so many things they throw at you. But one of my favorite things about that game is after you kill everyone, everything stops and you're just walking through this building where you mastered everyone quietly, you know? So they kind of want you to reflect on everything you did at the end of the, at, at the end of every level, uh, which I always loved about it, but that game, I still play the soundtrack to this day. It's yeah. one of my favorite. It, it's, it's, I can put that on at any point and I'm like, yep. Anytime, you know, I'll put it on. <laughs> but, um, and then my final game is basically the first indie I ever played. And it goes back to my Vita again. My Vita was like my indie machine back in the day. Um, and it was Spelunky and I'd never played a roguelike before. Uh, uh, and this game for me, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing at first. I was like, wait, okay, it's different this time around. What's going on here? And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Oh, what's this? Oh, and I kept on just like having to learn the game more and more and more. And it was kind of unlike anything I'd ever played before. And it's kind of funny because I just, I've been going back to it recently. And this just shows you how like this game can surprise you at any point. I bought an ax from a shop, was picking at something. Next thing I know, this thing above it just dropped down and smushed me. And I'm like, <laughs> oh okay I was like, yeah. so it's one of those games where like something new it feels like it's new every time you play it and uh, yeah. i really appreciate that and that was like the first like i said style of rogue type game that i was like oh okay i'm down with this but yeah that's my theory i will say uh i won't go off on too big of a tangent but todd and i have had many discussions where he says the vita is better than the 3ds and i, I like hard disagree <laughs> with that i think but everyone he, disagrees with me he, Yeah. He, well, he always brings up that it's the indie machine for him and Spelunky and Hotline Miami and all these other things. And I'm like, my indie heart has a hard time fighting against him on that. Um, but the 3DS is a better library. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyways, so I will now add my three picks to this list of 18. And all three of these games are something that are ve like very, very special to me. I'll start with Shovel Knight, which... I personally think that it's probably the best indie game ever made for a lot of reasons. Um, but for me, Shovel Knight came at a time where there wasn't like there are so many games like Shovel Knight now, whether it's the art style or it's, you know, traditional platformer that harkens back to like the 8-bit era, 16-bit era. But there was a time where that wasn't the thing that everyone was pumping out. And Shovel Knight was kind of you know, towards the beginning, if not the beginning of that, at least in a mainstream way. Um, and I think that, you know, over the course of that, I mean, that game technically has a bunch of DLC that's still considered like the main game. But even if you just take Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, which is the original game, I'm sorry, the Shovel of Hope, which is the original game. Um, I think that that game itself, without the expansions, which are all great in their own right, is such a benchmark for not only platformers, but just uh, indie games in general. I think that when you're looking at platforming games in particular, one of the most important things is tight controls. And if the jumping doesn't feel right, if the if it feels slippery, if the platforming doesn't feel pixel perfect, I feel like that can really make or break a platforming experience. And I feel like Shovel Knight executes both on gameplay, on art style. It has incredible music by Jake Kaufman. Um, I like, I love 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 shovel knight um 
So that is my first pick. My second pick is another game that I have a long history with, which is Cuphead. And Cuphead is one of those things that when I saw Cuphead get revealed, it was immediately like, this is something I need to play as soon as possible. And it got delayed for so, so long. And I remember it must have been like PAX East 2016, maybe, or maybe that's too early, 2017. And it was like the first demo that was available to play anywhere that I could go, that I was at. And I remember playing the game. It was at the, the Microsoft booth and playing the game over and over and over again. And just like, it was, it was actually way more difficult than it was in the final release. The, the <laughs> early beta was more difficult, um, but it was just so punishing. And one, one of the developers was from studio MDHR was standing there and we were just like talking and it was just everything about that moment then to when that game finally came out, uh, myself, uh, the other people in past controller, all of us got to my house the day that it came out and we all sat down and played, took turns playing co-op together. Um, and it just, it, it had such a special place in my heart for all of those reasons. But aside from all the personal stuff, I think that again, just it's very, very impressive what they did with that art style where it's all hand-drawn. Um, and it is, I think there's like nothing else as gorgeous as that game um, that I've ever seen. It's just, it's literally, you know, a playable cartoon. It's a cartoon in motion. Uh, and if you dig deeper into the history and the story of Studio MDHR and what those people had to do where, you know, they mortgaged their house, they did all these things, which is a story that probably is not too far from other indies, um, yeah. which is why I love indies. But there's just so much love and passion into that game. And for me, it stands out. And that music is so good for like how Todd can play the Hotline Miami soundtrack all the time. Like the Cuphead soundtrack that that is always finding its way into into my rotation and yeah i i love cuphead and then my final game which this is like my personal pick i really hope it makes the top 10 i don't feel confident it will make the top 10 but it is the messenger so for me the messenger is i would say that shovel knight was the benchmark for indie platforming games and i still think that shovel knight is a benchmark, but I feel like the messenger is the closest, if not the best comparison to um, an indie platformer that I think executes completely on, you know, a gameplay standpoint. I think that it, it nails what it's doing with the art style, which is, you know, eight, eight bit, 16 bit, you know, uh, they do a little, I don't want to go into too much uh, spoiling, but there is a twist that happens later in the game there's a switch between 8-bit graphic style and 16-bit graphic style, and there's a story reason as to why that happens. And I, that, I was not, like, I was expecting to love this game when I had the chance to play it with uh, uh, Thierry Boulanger, who's the creator uh, mm -hmm. at Sabotage Studio. But when I got to play it for my, like, at home with the, with the review copy and play, play the whole game at once, and knowing ahead of time that I knew there was this stuff because we had talked about it, even when it happened in the game, it was still so impactful to me that I think that's like good storytelling and good and good uh, something that's very hard to achieve. I think for for things, especially if you know in advance certain plot twists or elements that are gonna come about. So for me, that is just uh, it's it was my game of the year in 2018 when it came out. I love that game, and it uh, it definitely is one of my favorite indie games of all time. So awesome. Now that we have gone through our three picks each, we this are going to be hard. I just want to be very, very hard. Yeah. It's be very hard. <laughs> so we have gone through our 18 picks. We have 18 delicious indie games ahead of us. Now the hard part is basically telling eight of them they're not good enough. They're not good enough for the top. Before we get started, I just want to say we're talking about the top 18 indie games. Well, we're talking right. about the top 10, but these 18 are clearly incredible regardless of where they they end up on the list. Absolutely. So. For sure. And it was, I mean, I'm sure we all had, I mean, I saw some of your other lists of things that we, you know, had to leave off, oh, yeah. unfortunately, but I think like eight. Yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's so many other games that, you know, could very easily given a different day, different conversation be on this list. Um, so, you know, take, take this for what it is. It's, it's our top 10 at this moment. It could change tomorrow. If we had the same <laughs> conversation, who knows? It's true. 
Mm -hmm. So who wants to do the honors of taking a game and putting it on this list first? Put it on the list? <laughs> I mean, uh, how, how do we want to how do we want to start divi how do we want to start deciding what what makes the top 10? We'll say like just from observation uh, out of all the games that were said, I think the most agreeance that we got like head nods and things like that was when I said Castle Crashers. I'm just saying. I'm not saying that to say like, hey, my game should go on the list. But I saw like everyone being like, yes, Castle Crashers is awesome. So I'm just saying that like, you know, <laughs> I would put it in the top 10. It would be um, on the list for me. A lot of people it would be on the list for me yeah, too. I would definitely put it up there. So the I, will put right that, there. I will put that on there for now. Where it stays on the list, who knows? It's uh, sitting at it's sitting pretty at number one for now. Okay. <laughs> can, and then, can the behemoth keep it up? All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna start hurting some feelings. I'm so sorry. Uh, I love take uh, the initiative. Just start just start yeah, getting no, I'm gonna start, going I'm gonna, for I'm it. Gonna, I'm gonna start pulling heart strings. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Um, so uh Brendan, I love you, but the oh, messenger's no. not top ten. I'm sorry. I had to it's, go to bat for my for one of my favorite games. I, I knew you were going to say it, but I was just like, I'm gonna have to let, I, I, like, I'm gonna have to let you down quickly. Uh, I wish I could chime in. I haven't played it. Because the thing is with oh, the messenger so is good. that there are games, uh, not that I wouldn't say are comparable, but I feel like there are games that have recently came out around the same span as the mess around t same time frame as the messenger, that I feel like are more talked about and more like you need to play this. You need like you need to play this game. Like you need to play Dead Cells. You need to play Hollow Knight. So, you need to play. Like, so things like yes. that that in in 2018 celeste dead cells hollow knight and the messenger all came out and no one talks about the messenger which is why i have to bring it up today because <laughs> i love that game and it doesn't get the praise it deserves it sold very well it did very well they're making a prequel that's also an rpg called sea of stars fantastic looking game yeah but uh yeah i i have to go to bat for one of my favorite games but I understand not, it. I, I can take that. I can take that. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. And we're not like, and again, we, we always say like, all these are good games. Like none of these Absolutely, games are bad. Yeah. It's just like top 10. We got to, got to make some cuts here. And uh, for me, I think like the easiest cut right now that I see uh, that I've played uh, a little bit of is the messenger. So I'm that's. Are there any that we can <laughs> hold hands on and say, yes. I I'm with Cam on the messenger though, because I, I, I oh, thought it was Todd, all right. Go but, away. Sorry. Get out of here. <laughs> I was trying to change you. the topic for you. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's not a bad game. Him. It's not a bad game. Uh, <laughs> can we hold? Can we? Can at least four of us hold hands on Undertale? Yes. Right. Yes. 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 Okay. That's mm -hmm. that's on the list. There's two. Um, I would probably put Undertale above Castle Crashers as well. We're Same. not going to rank them yet. We're not I ranking them yet. Oh. We're not whoa, ranking whoa, them whoa. yet. Okay. No, we don't. We don't. Got to build the suspense. Uh. I, think, I would also uh, hold hands on Celeste. I feel like. I no. Me too. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm oh, sorry. Alex, Alex and I are deep. holding hands. Anyone else coming for this? I, I recognize it's a oh. great game. It just didn't, and I think it does some important messages. It just didn't hit with like I played it in full. I played the entire game. I know the entire story. We're not gonna be friends after and this game. I think <laughs> I think it's a great game. I just our relationship is over. I just didn't. I don't think it's a top ten indie. Remember, indies are like. 10 years old at this point you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's just for there's sure. so many games I can we think keep that... it on the list for now sure 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 okay <laughs> just because you never know, you know my own 20 content. minutes from I now things say, might be different one thing that i really want to point out about celeste because celeste was actually one of my top three choices and then i was so excited that alex picked celeste so that i could like free up another space for something else um so for me celeste is especially impactful because uh like for me, it changed the way that I thought about a genre um, because of all of the accessibility that it has yep. included. For and sure. so I think the fact that it allowed people to access a genre that maybe they would have never tried, I think is so powerful for any game. So I definitely want to like not knock it off the list, but definitely keep it there. Sure, sure. You know what? I, I'd like to add something to Celeste and maybe sway, maybe sway some hearts, maybe sway some people here. <laughs> you know, Celeste came out in 2018 the messenger came out in 2018 you know, if jenny and alex want to go to bat for the messenger i could you know tick that box oh. for some no, oh, get out of here get out don't of make deals don't make deals it's uh, early. We can make deals so i'm going okay uh can we, i think we can all hold hands on shovel knight i mean i that's a yes for me or obviously i think yeah because no 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 
I got we got two uh, yeses. It's not my I, favorite. I'm, I mean, I, man, I will I'm say that. <laughs> I will say two two D platformers really? like. Uh, well, Shovel Knight in particular. I'm not going to talk about two D platform. Shovel Knight in particular, for some reason, like I respect that game so much, and I know that is beloved. And like me, even just like saying like a butt in here, like everybody's hating me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like kind of shit right now. Like, listen, uh, I respect Shovel Knight. I think it's an excellent game. Just didn't necessarily land for me as as uh, hard as it did for other people. Also, it got I'm just, okay. I'm just also, you can it was at big him enough. at it's Van Aken. Oh and no! Was, <laughs> how very wrong was, he is. Uh, I'm Shovel Knight was <laughs> Shovel Knight was big enough that it got amiibos, y'all. It got amiibos. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, so, it, is, it is the only indie game, indie indie uh, representative that is a assist trophy in Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, like Shovel Knight was the one character that I like legitimately thought could have been could be a Smash character when should have been in Smash. Like. Like that one, the one indie character that I can think of. Like this makes I sense. I agree with you. Smash. I think Shovel Knight is a gear. Like I, I don't, I don't know. But like, we I'm not on, saying it's on. not top ten. We I'm just on. not like number we'll one. Move on. We'll move on. Uh, for, I think for, it's we could put it in the top. No, 10 I think we can somewhere. leave it in there for now. We can leave it in for there for now. now. Let's do oh it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this: like, if I'm making like the pillar of indie games, like not even the top ten, like pillars of indies, Shovel Knight is like a a hole on that I building agree. for me. I agree. Hands down. Um, I, I do like how our, our method of, of getting to this top 10 is holding hands. Yeah. I want to acknowledge how great that is. It's just majority. Like, to, can a majority of people say that this would be on top 10? Um, okay. So here's where uh, things, I, things are going to get dicey as well. Um, let's talk about Journey for a second. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> so I played, I played Journey... Ready. I played Journey uh, when it was like, it came out free for PS4, PlayStation Plus, and I'm not a big PlayStation guy. Like I didn't have a PS3 for most of the PS3 era, so I didn't really play Journey when it came out. And that might be the reason why it didn't really connect with me. Um, Cause you know, uh, Jenny was talking about like, basically you can run into other players in the game while you're playing. I did not have that experience. Mm. Uh, I didn't, and I think that even though probably at the time it was an amazing experience as a game, but knowing that that is like a really attractive feature about that game that is no longer really a thing uh kind of in my opinion hurts the quality of the game over time and just the amount of replayability i'm not saying that that's the entire journey experience but that was like because i remember i played through the entirety of the game and i didn't know that that was a feature when i played through it and and until after i beat the game and someone uh brought it up like on twitter and i was like wait, you can run into other people in the game? Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, I, I don't know. So for me, I just feel like, even though I think the music is incredible, I think the art style is gorgeous. Um, I just think that because of that being kind of a, Journey feels very much to me like a, at the time, this was phenomenal. But like, if you replayed it now, I don't know if it would fully be the same experience. Does that make sense? <laughs> Can I make an argument for Journey without other players? So the first time I played Journey, I also did not encounter other players. And for me, it was more impactful for me to play alone than when I encountered other players when I played it again on PC and it kind of got a small resurgence of new players. I think that the solitary journey makes it a little bit more intimate and it makes it more, I don't want to say sad, but you feel that kind of loneliness as you are alone and the world is kind of dead around you. And I think that that still works, at least for me. I definitely felt it, especially with the music. I think the music is one of the things that really hammers at home because there's no dialogue, but you still get the sense, you know, even without other players, even when you're playing alone, of what the game is about and the replayability of it. I mean, yeah, I think with players, without players, I think that there's a lot of great elements to Journey that I would I would go to bat for it solo or with other players. Mm -hmm. I also love its like use of color, and you know how like the, the entire you know the majority of the game isn't steeped in like these warm like reds and oranges, and then you make that final ascent, and like there's just that such a dramatic shift visually that like sparks something. Uh, yeah. I don't know. No, yeah, for sure. I uh, I just I just think that um like I completely agree. Like I definitely finished the game. I was like that was a good game. That was a very good game. Um I just didn't like when people were, like when IGN gave a game of the year, I was like I do not I did not understand that. I was just like uh okay. Uh uh and I still don't. But um 
I just think that when I'm talking, when I'm thinking top 10, I, it just doesn't come to mind. I, I expected someone to bring it up, but I just, for me personally, so we can well, leave it's funny that. We can leave I, nev I never hear anyone talking about journey anymore. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I, I feel like we, I mean, we talk about indies quite, maybe it's just because uh, it's, it's been a long time, but I don't know. I never, in my circle of friends, I never hear people talking about that game. Yeah, I, I, I've, I, I have never played journey. So I have to no. hold my head in shame and, and step away from this, this unfortunate conversation. I do but, like that. Cam is, a, is like, completely owning and assuming the role of villain on this podcast. Oh, I've got <laughs> so one coming up. <laughs> I'm used to it. I'm used to it. I have one too, right? Uh, how much time do we have left, uh, Brennan? Uh, we, we are about about 18 minutes. 18? Okay. Oh, oh, my dang. Gosh. Okay. oh my gosh. Can we, all yeah. hold, can we all hold hands? Uh, can at least four of us hold hands on Limbo? Top I think if we're going between Limbo and Inside, I would have to lean toward Inside. Me too. No. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I love oh. No. Yeah. They're both really good games, but I think Limbo. what Inside does is take what Limbo has set up for the studio and they have markedly improved on like gameplay aspects, on foreshadowing, on the I nuance, on the story. They did what they did in Limbo and then some in Inside. So I think I'd have to go with Inside for that. I okay, okay. Here are my arguments against Inside. I love Inside. I love 18 Inside. minutes. 18 yeah, really minutes. Quick, just really quick. Just really quick. Hear me out. <laughs> Like, so, so people say that like Braid is the game that brought back indies, right? Limbo was the game that set like concrete, like, and indies are back. They're important. This is what games can be at a small level. And like, at, like, I remember when Limbo came out, everyone was playing it. It came to like all the systems. It was on phones. It was on tablets. It was everywhere. And I would see people come out and play it. Like people that I didn't even know, like people that didn't even game that I saw playing Limbo. And, uh, you know, and then with Inside, my issues with Inside, I think, I don't think it's, uh, I, they're, like, I, didn't, I wasn't a big fan of the water sections. I thought that those were meh, and I did not like the ending. Uh, even though oh. it was like, oh, up to speculation oh, and stuff yeah, like that, I love it. it was just, it, like, I don't know, just, com and I'm, compar I'm comparing the two because they're both play dead. Like, I felt an impact with Limbo's ending, while Inside was just kind of like, it just kind of fell flat for me. So for me, for the endings, like, I agree, Limbo's ending is incredible. It for is, me, yeah. Inside is for games that rely so heavily on animation and the character's body language to tell the story. The ending of Inside takes that that concept for me, at least, to the nth degree, and it is so absurd and so unlike anything else you see in the rest of the game. It just like strikes you and just like I don't know. It just it, it left a lasting impression on me. So, so I, I love them both too, but inside is would be my, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, at the very least, put inside on the list. I mean, I, it's in my top oh, personal top oh, ten of the. Oh, it's so there. It's on. The list. <laughs> I am so hurt right oh. now. Okay. Anyway, uh, I wasn't expecting that to be honest with you. Yeah, that, <laughs> that hurt my soul. Um, Does anyone want to propose a hand holding on anything? Uh, um. Cuphead could Cuphead. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I would, yeah, I would obviously yes. go to bat here for Cuphead. I have one that I, uh, someone's going to hate me, but I mean, Cuphead just snuck I, in with no, no issues. Yeah. Put yeah. That on the list. Yeah. I can put that on the list. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Cuphead's on the list. Uh, I would, I'll go ahead. Todd, you were. Yeah. I was just going to say, um, don't kill me. Uh, Firewatch uh, for that for me that game just <laughs> 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 so yeah, it agree. wasn't the story it was I just felt like um, for me when I played it it was kind of it it, the perform, it didn't perform as well like the game itself uh, was very like okay. I had issues with that but that's not like what bothered me the most I think like the story was really good it started off really great and I get it's all about like normal characters but the ending I don't think the ending did anything for me and you're wanting something bigger. Not necessarily. They, they kind of, they kind of like that's, build it up like it's gonna be, you know, this yeah, huge no. conspiracy. But I get yeah. what they're doing. I get that it's not yeah. about it's 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 more realistic that it's not something mm -hmm. bigger, you know. And I and it's yeah. more about like these characters and everything. But and I was really into them at first, but I got to a halfway point and I'm just like roaming through the woods and I'm just like, where am I going right now? And I'm no one's. I'm not talking on the. I don't know. It just kind of lost me halfway through. But um, I, I finished it. But um yeah I, I was expecting maybe a bigger payoff at the end but i don't think it's necessary but that that's like sure. one that and i can i, I can totally respect that like um i think one of the reasons like i like that game so much is henry uh and his wife are like 
uh, from a place called Boulder, Colorado, which is where I live. So I have that extra oh, emotional yeah, touch absolutely. point. I'm like, yep. they talk about like Pearl Street in the intro or whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, 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 I've been there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you, it, it gets bonus points for that. And you, you feel like more, uh, a little more, I think it's an added touch point. You know what I mean? That no, kind absolutely. Of, uh, and I did, I did, and to speak of the, to the ending, I won't like go too deep into spoilers, but I enjoyed the humanness of it. And uh, I know there's like a couple different choices, but um, they all kind of boil down to the same thing. Um, and yeah, I just like that. It wasn't, it was, um, things didn't pan out like I wanted them to. And sometimes that's how, how life works. Um, and, you know, people, people part ways, uh, even when, you know, it's sad. And that kind of was just like a poignant ending for me. Um, but I, I, I'm looking at the, the rest of this list. I'm happy to say, you know, Firewatch made it into the top 18, top 15. Well, are we, are we, did we, sw I know Todd and Cam were against Firewatch. Is there a third? Uh, I'm against Firewatch. Against Firewatch making the top 10? Yeah. Jenny yeah. Morgan? I'll be I have against any. it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I love Firewatch, but I'm going to say, let's, let's not get it out. <laughs> and just to speed through to okay. Even though you guys are saying like, oh, inside over limbo, that's fine. Who said this? Have both games on there. Who said this? I don't Who's disagree. I, I mean, I don't disagree with that. We They're can revisit it. Listen, we can <laughs> we can revisit it at the end when we figure out if Celeste is going to make the list or not. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I so would like to propose a hand holding on something. Okay, and that would be Florence because I agree. of mm -hmm. all of these games that are here. Florence is probably the one that has given me the biggest emotional uh, experience where I played Florence. I downloaded it on a whim. I heard it was good. It was on mobile. I never play games on my phone usually. And I downloaded it in bed one night and I was... Went to bed insulted. crying. Yes, I went to bed. <laughs> like I, I laid awake in bed and I just like stared at the ceiling and I was like... Mm -hmm. Hello, darkness, my old. So hard. It's just, it's, yeah. it, it is, it is a fantastic representation of a relationship. Like it is, yeah. it, it might be the best representation of a relationship I've ever played in a video game. Like mm -hmm. it is so well done. And to echo some of the things that Jenny said earlier, it's just like the things that the game makes you do. Like the gameplay isn't necessarily like this crazy, you know, groundbreaking gameplay, but the stuff that it makes you do and how it changes as the course of the story goes along is very, very interesting and really not done in other games that i've seen um mm -hmm. so i would say florence should be on here i don't know i agree i agree i guess i've never, I've never played it so oh you got I three agree. so you're good no we need four you need four no four put it on the list put it all on, right, yeah, put it all on. right. Yeah. i love it uh so, so we have six on the list now right we are we are currently at I, we're at seven because celeste is on the list what did we get a four? We Did put it there four? for now. We put it there for now. We said oh, we'd revisit it at the end. Okay, yes, okay, yes, okay. yes. <laughs> I'm sure it stays. Uh, okay. Uh, can we hold hands on Hotline Miami? I, I'm back in Hotline Miami. I haven't it's played close. it, so I can't I mean, vote. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, that game for me, too, and I'll, I mean, that's the game I picked, but that game, I think, was a huge, huge kick in the ass for indies as well. That was one yeah, of the yeah, earlier games that, sure. that was like, and I don't think that should be the reason why it gets picked, but um, it, yeah, that game's just so freaking cool. I just, and you I, go back and play it and it's so fun. And I just feel like um, Hollow Miami is definitely like one of those games where it's like, you know, I feel like with indies nowadays, especially people are more attuned to like indies that have like a really good story or something like that. Like, story related video games just in general but Hotline Miami I just feel like in general is one of the titles where where people just like when it comes to indies like you have to play Hotline Miami you just you have to and I just feel like with some of these other games uh that are on the list that we even some that we haven't bro uh, brought up yet uh that's not the case uh just through my own experience um Hot Hotline gets a fringe vote for me it, I can see it sneaking onto the bottom of the list I do love Hotline Miami but I'm not, um, I'm not necessarily 100% sold on it as a top 10, but I do love that game. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so the things we have left that we haven't uh, debated on are The Binding of Isaac, Spelunky, uh, Don't Starve, Chivalry, Life is Strange. Uh, and that, I, Actually, I think that's everything. Those are the games we have not we deliberated on. Stanley Parable. We have not oh, Stanley Parable as well. I apologize, yes. Uh, how much time do we have left? 
we a have a, about <laughs> nine minutes. Oh my god. Okay. So uh, I'm going to say two things really quick. Uh, again, I'm not trying to attack anyone or their opinions. Uh, I've never I've I've heard of Darwin Starve. I just haven't played it. And Chivalry, oh. I I have not played either. So I really just can't say much about those two games. Uh, I haven't so, played Chivalry either, but I'd love to. Um, it was awesome. Uh, this, is what I'll say, this is what I'll say about <laughs> I, Chivalry. Or go ahead, Morgan. Well, I'm Morgan. I was going to say that of the three that I picked, I would be fine with leaving Don't Starve and Chivalry off, but I would not be fine with leaving Life is Strange off just because of the narrative choices mm -hmm. and the legacy for Don't Nod and how they've continued to build on that, but that's just me. Okay. As someone who has not played Chivalry, I do want to say, hearing you talk about how you know, without the game pushing players to be this way, that it has this online community that is very helpful and guides people. I feel like not only is that something that's rare in games in general, but it's even rarer, if not something I've never even heard of in an online indie game. So I think that in itself speaks to not only the community, but clearly the game is such a good enough game that there are people that care that much about the game. So I, I would, again, as someone who has never played Chivalry, that tidbit to me, I think speaks volumes about the game itself and it's obviously its community. I played and, and love chivalry. I mean, the game has a dedicated yell button. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's hilarious. <laughs> it's a really good um, game. <laughs> I, it probably wouldn't be top 10 for me. Although, man, I need, I need to play chivalry after we're done with this podcast. Cause yeah, <laughs> that game is so good. Um, it's probably not top 10 for me though. Okay. I'd be um, okay with that. That's fine. Like, okay. Okay. So is Life is Strange making this list? Because Morgan is about to yeah. is about to shank some people if it doesn't. So let's talk <laughs> okay. about Life is Strange. Oh so, so yeah, so I'll I'll talk about Life is Strange. I'm gonna play the bad guy again. I I play I played both. I played Life is Strange. I love Life is Strange. I really do. I have issues with it. Um, but I I think it has so many incredible moments. But um, but, uh, just thinking from top ten indie games perspective. I just don't think it makes the list. Uh, I think some of the dialogue is really corny. I think that the characters are well written, but just the actual dialogue does like sometimes it's just really cringy. Um, I saw my I had my fiance play through it uh, the first time like a few weeks like a, like a few months ago, and uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. But again, I think I think there's so many incredible incredible moments in that game, both narratively and just like hitting reality in the face. Um, and I think it does that very, very well, but I just think as a game, I don't know. That's, I, again, I don't. Does anyone don't, else want to step in here? I feel terrible. For Life is Strange? I haven't played it. Oh, you should. It's great. I, well, I, I had it spoiled. <laughs> I had it spoiled. It's great. That's why great. It's just not top 10. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> But it's a game. I think I might have to agree with Cam on this one, which I am so sorry. It feels so bad. <laughs> I feel I really enjoy Life is Strange, but I think looking at some of the other titles on the list, contextually, I don't think it would make top 10 just among this group of games <laughs> for me. That's terrible. You guys are horrible so, people. I know. Yeah. I feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> this went from hand holding to backstabbing. No, I'm so right. sorry. Oh. So. Oh Looking at the clock and looking at the fact that we have two, potentially three spots to fill, what is going to round out a 10? Did, it, did anyone play Spelunky? Did we even bring it up? <laughs> I've heard great <laughs> things about Spelunky uh, enough to be like, I would be okay with it being on the top 10 because, again, I've just heard from word of mouth alone enough good things about it um, that I would be down to backing it uh, for, for top 10. Um, but, uh, you know... I, don't I think I would put Spelunky I mean, over put... Binding of Isaac, I think. Same. I wouldn't do that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I would I put Spelunky that, but... over Binding of Isaac. Uh, for me. Just give, just give me, if, you give me, if you guys give me Limbo, I'll just be like, y'all, finish work on the list and have good. I'm good. Like, but what do we have on the list right now, Brendan? So, so the, the current good. list is in no specific order. Uh, Undertale, Castle Crashers, Shovel Knight, Celeste, Inside, Cuphead, Florence, Hotline Miami. That leaves two spots. I know Celeste was a was a potential fringe knockoff, but I think just based on what we've discussed already, I think Celeste is probably going to stay. Um, so that leaves us with two spots to figure out in a few minutes. And we're talking Spelunky, Binding of Isaac, based on like response. Don't yes. starve. Um, limbo, maybe not. Stanley Limbo's Parable. Yeah, 
Journey and the Messenger. But I think Ooh. we cut off the Messenger. <laughs> yes, and I will. Journey, I will. I will Journey, allow that. Like, yeah, Journey. I, I like, again. I'm just going off my experience. Like, but I'm sure. Like, you know, I just can't. I can't speak for anyone else on that. Uh, just because my experience was different. Um, but I still think out of this list that we w went over, that Limbo is the strongest contender. That isn't a lock yet. I'm just I would saying. be remiss if I didn't go to bat for Stanley Parable one more time, uh, just because I was the one that brought it up. I think one thing that really is going for Stanley Parable among this list and as a top 10 all-time indie great is that um, I don't think any other, like this game could not have happened in any other space than an indie space. And I think uh, the fact that it really forces the player to think about what it even means to play a game uh, is is just, again, it's something that doesn't happen outside of indies, and the game design for that is so masterful. So I just wanted to, like, put that out there again. Um, I think I would go to bat for Stanley Parable. I mean, it it directly inspired Gone Home, Firewatch, mm -hmm. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, like, countless games that kind of, like, help revitalize the walking, like, the narrative-based, you know, walking sim, you know, as we know it today. Um, I feel like Stanley Parable's, like, what, 2011? Was, like, mm -hmm. that first Somewhere one. Somewhere around that, there. Like, that we're going to this... Kickstarted that. If we're and going that, if we're going that <laughs> I know route, what you're if, gonna say, Cam. <laughs> if we're going that route, no games, no indie games would be here without Limbo. None. That Zero. That's not true. That's Get not true. <laughs> That's not true. I'm over exaggerating. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, it concreted. Like, in it did. That's what it. That's Limbo. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm no, putting the motion down. Stanley Parable. Because I want I'm on heard, board with that. some I've walking heard, stem representation. I've heard good enough things about Stanley Parable so bad, that, like, I'm I'm cool with it. Um, same, same. I actually, like, looked up, like, some top indie lists just to see if I forget, forget anything. And on, like, I think the main list that I looked at, uh, Stanley Parable was number one. It yeah, was, it was on the top of a lot of lists I looked at. So, yeah, so we're yeah. at the two-minute mark, so we oh, need gosh. this 10th game. Okay, all right. Limbo. I'm, say, limbo. I'm saying Spelunky. Limbo. That's my, I'm saying I'm Limbo. Saying Spelunky. I'm saying Limbo. Jenny, what are you saying? Oh, gosh, wait, what are we even saying in between? Is it uh, between Spelunky and... Whatever you want to and... save for the final one, and whoever has yeah. the most votes, I mean, we're going to lock I mean, I want Journey, but that's, <laughs> that's me being... <laughs> it's personal. It's just like such a... I think it's such a masterful game, so... I think I still I still think it's great. I just think Limbo's better. <laughs> That's very okay. I, of of those, I would vote for Journey. So Journey has two. Limbo has uh, one. Spelunky has one. I I think it should be Spelunky or Journey. I'd be willing to do Journey. Todd. See, I do Spelunky or Limbo. So that makes me the <laughs> tying vote. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, this is oh. this is rough. I'm gonna How, I'm gonna say Life on. is Strange. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> no so no you haven't even played it you said you haven't played it Fair uh, enough. so after so uh, oh, so between the three games spelunky journey and limbo which two would you whittle it down to and then we'll vote you have to I cut mean, one have, of them off we have, have 40, off. we have 40 seconds so I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna throw my vote to spelunky so that puts spelunky on the top 10 is that, that that's go. not four that's that's uh, it was you, Alex, Alex and me, Todd. and Todd. But Journey That's has three. two. I'm okay, okay with that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I could live yeah. with that. <laughs> Fine, put Spelunky on the list then. Yeah, okay. So sure. the top Yay. ten ends up being, in no specific order, Undertale, Castle Crasher, Shovel Knight, Celeste, Inside, Cuphead, Florence, Hotline Miami, Stanley Parable, and Spelunky. And that is the top ten best indie games of all time. I like <laughs> wanted to try to leave time for everyone to quickly like plug themselves. Yeah. Um, right. Let's just run it around the same order we did the. So go Alex, Cam, Jenny, Morgan, Todd, me. Uh, I'm Alex Van Aken. Uh, I do a lot of cool things over at okbeast.com uh, and youtube.com slash okbeast and check out the okbeast okay podcast. Those are all of my plugs. I'm Cameron Hawkins. I write for DualShockers.com. I've been featured on IGN, Kind of Funny Games Daily, and Inside Gaming. And uh, yeah, and I uh, stream on Twitch.tv slash The Cinephile Guy. Hi, I'm Jenny Windham. I'm the communications manager for Rose City Games. You can find us at Rose City Games. Um, and I also stream indie games at Twitch.tv slash Kimchika. 
Uh, hi, I'm Morgan Shaver. Uh, I do a little bit of everything. I'm the editor-in-chief of Vidding Obscura. I work at Greenland Content, writing for sites like All Gamers and Prima. Um, and then I do the social media for Tetris. And I'm Brennan Groom. I'm the host and editor at Pass the Controller. And you can find all of our stuff at passthecontroller.io on Twitter and on Instagram at Pass Controller.